High in the halls of the kings who are gone, Jenny would dance with her ghost. Sansa is now completely in the role of Elaine Stone, and she has considerable influence in the Eyrie. On the balcony of her room in the Maiden's Tower, she surveys the armies of the Lord Declarant camped outside the Gates of the Moon. Lord Gilwood Hunter arrived first, and immediately blockaded supplies from reaching the Eyrie. Though they are not yet under siege, the situation looks dire from her standpoint. Lord Robert, even more irritable than normal because there are no eggs or bacon, tells Elaine that he still hears Marillion singing every night. Elaine assures him that the bard is dead, although she has not seen the body, but she herself no longer hears singing. When Littlefinger arrives, he informs them that the Lord's Declarant are on the way to the Eyrie for a parley. He tells Elaine that there will be eight of them, but he is only concerned about Lynn Corbray. We learn that Lynn fought against John Arryn at Gulltown, at the onset of Robert's rebellion, but later fought alongside him at the Trident, where he slew Prince Lewin Martell of the Kingsguard and broke the Dornish line. While his elder brother supports Peter's position as Lord Protector of the Vale, Sir Lynn has taken up with the Lord Declarant. Bearing the Valyrian steel sword Lady Forlorn, Sir Lynn is a dangerous and unpredictable man, quick to demand a duel. The Lord's Declarant seek to defend Lord Robert and the Vale, but do not acknowledge the Lord Protector, naming him a false counsellor who has been misruling the Vale. After Robert has another fit, Littlefinger suggests that Maester Coleman try giving him sweet sleep, although the Maester seems reticent to do so. Elaine tells her father that Jon Royce will recognise her, having met her at Winterfell when Waymar Royce took the black. But Peter explains that men see what they expect to see. She also asks him why he doesn't leave the Vale to take up his position as Lord of Harrenhal. Littlefinger is convinced the place is cursed, especially after what happened to Tywin Lannister, Gregor Clegane, and Vargo Holt. Lady Shella Went recently died without any heirs, claiming yet another family that once ruled at Black Harren's nightmare castle. When Elaine recommends that he give Harrenhal to Lord Walder Frey, Peter smiles and tells her he might, but he would really like to give it to Cersei although he might have to remove her from the game sooner than planned, unless she removes herself. Elaine leads the Lord Declarant up to Peter's Solar, where he confounds them by saying that he would like to sign their declaration to weed out the false counsellors. But Jon Royce tells him that they did not come to obtain his signature. They are here to remove Littlefinger and to take Lord Robert to foster at Runestone. Peter informs them that he plans to foster the sons of other lords here, so that Robert will have boys his own age around. He also asks Lady Anya Wainwood to send Harold Harding to the Eyrie as his ward, but the lords scoff at this request. Littlefinger refuses their demand that he leave the Vale and turn over Robert, and after he calls their bluffs of violence, Lynn Corbray draws Lady Forlorn. But this enrages the other lords declarant, and Bron Jean Royce tells the knight to up his steel, reminding him that they are guests. Corbray stalks off, but this has worked to Littlefinger's advantage, as he now turns hostile towards the lords. Demanding that they lift their encampment and give him one year to set the veil to rights, or else he will willingly step down as Lord Protector, all the lords except Jon Royce agree, and Peter emerges victorious in the parley. Later that night, after the Lords have departed, Elaine asks Peter what he plans for the next year. Littlefinger continues his tutelage of Elaine in playing the Game of Thrones. He states that one or two of the older Lords may die over the course of the next year, and Lord Gilwood Hunter may well be killed by his younger brother Harlan, who arranged Old Lord Eon's death. Peter admits that he will never be able to sway Bron Jon Royce. But when Elaine inquires about Sir Lynn Corbray, he tells her that he can be bought with gold and boys and promises.